Hi, my name is Maya Capua and I'm one of the POCUS fellows here at SickKids. Today we're going to be talking about optic destrusin, which is a concretion that may calcify over time and can be a common mimicker of both papilledema on ultrasound and on fundoscopy. The prevalence of clinically evident optic dystrusin is about 0.34% in the population, but may increase in families that have a genetic predisposition to this. It's often bilateral, and there's no male to female predominance. It's more commonly found in Caucasian individuals rather than African American individuals. There's a higher predisposition of having optic dystrusin in certain genetic conditions such as retinitis pigmentosa, allergial syndrome, Usher syndrome, and several other conditions as well. So the next step is how do we identify it on ultrasound? So you're gonna be using your linear high frequency transducer and you wanna make sure that you're set to ocular settings because that's important for both the mechanical index and the thermal index to be as low as possible to prevent potential theoretical sequelae. Then you're gonna place the tegaderm or whatever protective barrier you're gonna have between your eye and the probe on and place a substantial amount of gel. You wanna make sure that you're not putting any pressure on the eye itself. You're gonna scan the eye both in the transverse and longitudinal planes and you wanna make sure that your optic nerve is as centered as possible in the screen. So here you can see a normal optic nerve with no elevation or optic disc cupping, no evidence of papilledema. The next one that you're going to be able to see is one that is positive for papilledema where you see that hump on top of it, uh, which would be concerning for increased intracranial pressure. The last one that you see here is the optic distrusion. So you have a similar hump, but in the center you have this hyperechoic area uh, that goes all the way down to the core. And this is consistent with optic nerve drusen. So why does this matter? How does this change our management? One key feature to this is that if you have an asymptomatic patient who had incidentally found papilledema and was referred into your institution, and you happen to find drusen on that patient, you may be able to defer further management in the ER and send them outpatient to ophthalmology for further investigations. This is very different than for the symptomatic patients that present to the ER and are found to have optic nerve drusen. It's very difficult to differentiate papilledema with drusen versus drusen with no papilledema. And as such, those patients may require more definitive imaging such as MRI or CT to rule out an intracranial process that could be causing their symptoms.